All right, so the previous video, we went through and demonstrated how to set up structures in Ghidra and how to apply those structures to data. Um, what we're going to do now is see how this structure is used. Uh, so we're going to go back to main here. And as you can see, whenever I updated the name, then it also updated this space as well. So that's going to be really convenient as you're moving through a program to name stuff. And your first attempt at naming something may not be totally accurate. Uh, you may name it something that's, you know, that you think is obvious at your first attempt um, and then you find that later that that's totally not what it was and that that's normal so the last video I kind of hinted at these cross references that Ghidra shows you in this listing view those are really important because it tells you in this case um, for this global variable it tells you everywhere in the program that is referencing that particular global variable. So in setup, setup global variable struct, what we done analysis on the last video, we had one cross references, or one cross reference. That was in main, so this is the, the function that the cross reference was made, and this is the location inside of main at which um, this is referenced. So a quick way to um, kind of navigate around in Ghidra is to um, go to these cross references, choose them and double click on them. So for instance, um, I can go directly to main from here. Uh, instead of hitting G and going back to main, I can just directly double click this and it takes me takes me back to main. And for this global structure, we can see that there's one, two, three, four, five references made to this global structure variable that we set up uh, inside of the program. One of them is in main, happens to be right here. And the other ones are uh, in this setup global structure. It also tells me um, that in the setup global structure function that it is writing to, uh, you know, it, it's writing data. If I scroll down here, you'll see that this particular one and this function at this offset, it's reading whatever data this is. Um, and at the moment, I don't know what, what this is, but maybe a little later we'll have a name for this and, and we can, uh, you know, as we, as we put the puzzle pieces together, we, we'll, we'll understand, you know, what's being read here. Uh, and again, um, you know, we have this global data that is being read at, at this function at these different offsets here. So, what we want to do now is figure out how this global structure is being used. So it's being passed in. Um, what Ghidra is saying is being passed in as an address to here. So if we dive into that, we'll see we have a number of print statements here. We have a while loop. Uh, and Ghidra, whenever it done its analysis, it said that this function signature was a byte pointer pointer um, which we kind of know that that is not correct um, so what we want to do is fix this function signature um, before we kind of try to figure out what's happening here um, the reason why we want to do that is it's going to make this where we have this uh, param1 
uh, param1 plus 1, param1 plus 6, etc, etc. Whenever you see this kind of stuff, you it should be uh, immediately obvious after you've done this in a certain amount of time that this is um, making references to either a class or in this case a structure. Uh, so what we want to do, we have this global structure set up. We want to either hit Y or right click and hit uh, edit function signature. And instead of this being a byte pointer pointer, we want to make it a global structure pointer. So whenever we do that, we can see that the work that we done in the last video is paying off um, because instead of having these, you know, plus one, plus six, uh, whatever else we had down here, we're actually seeing in this disassembled view um, what uh, we named the offsets in our structure. So for instance, if I change this, um, if I change this to ABC here, that'll show up here as well. Um, so we can now um, have a, a, a bit of a better uh, kind of data presentation of this particular function. Instead of having numbers here, we ha we actually have names. Um, so if we take a look at this, it's pretty obvious from these print statements um, that uh, we're printing, you know, struct um, eight byte or eight eight bits, sixteen bits, thirty two bits, and exactly what we would expect: a byte, a word, and the D word here. So what this is doing is printing out this offset. This one is printing out whatever data is in this offset, and this one is printing out whatever data is in this offset. And then this while loop, what this while loop is doing um, is a essentially a C string print routine where it's comparing the current uh, character um, where, where the pointer is currently pointing to to the null termination. Um, if it's not null, if it's not the null, null termination, then it's putting the character, um, in this case, out to the screen, and then it's incrementing the pointer. So it's going to iterate through the character array, printing out each character uh, for each iteration. So we can name this function now print global struct just like that so um, I think that I've got time to move on here so we'll jump back out of main here and we'll dive into this next function we can see here that we've got two arguments that's being passed into this function one of them is again a global global variable. If we take a look at that, we have some data that's kind of structured here. Um, and then we have three, uh, an integer three right there. So if we dive into this, then we conveniently have a, another print statement that says array index value. It's kind of giving us a, uh, a hint right here. Um, Kind of alluding to what we're actually uh, looking at here and in this case um, it looks like we are have an index here we're setting that index to zero and we have a while loop that prints out the current value of the uh, index into the array uh, i param 1 and then it 
increments in depth. And it does this until the index is equal to whatever we're passing in here. So in this case, it's three. So again, the way that I done that is highlighted, um, hit L, and I changed the name. Um, now we know that this is not an integer value that is being passed into this. Um, it's actually a pointer. And what I normally do is just go to edit function and just to make things quick, uh, just do int pointer. Um, there's a, a number of ways that you can do this. If I hit okay there, then you can see that it's showing us um, now uh, a little more of what we would expect um, something like this to look like it's actually showing you know the brackets um, so if this was an array an array and then the uh, inside of the brackets here we we have the the index just like if we were writing a C if, if we had a you know C array and um, we wanted to reference one of the uh, one of the values you know at, at one of the offsets in, inside of that array so we can name this print array and if we jump back out here um, we can go to this global offset and we can now uh, apply an array to this global offset um, it's in this case there's only one reference to it it's not really going to benefit us anymore in the program unless it's the case where Ghidra didn't recognize where this was being referenced anywhere else. It, that's not the case. Um, but what we can do is go ahead and turn this into a, uh, an array. So what I can do is uh, we, we actually have a clue as to uh, how big the elements in this array is by right here uh, with this percent sign 4x we know that the um, the size of each of the elements is going to be 4 so we can create these as double words and we can go to data, create array. And in this case, it's giving me the option to create either one element, which we already have one ele element, or three elements. If we go more than three, then what's going to happen is we're going to overflow into other, gate, uh, other data that Ghidra has already assigned. Uh -huh. So we don't want to do that. So we're just going to choose three and as you can see it has now created three elements in this global array that um, that is one 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 two 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 three 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 so that's going to be it for this video the next video we're going to get in more of the C++ stuff um, which is creating um, classes and and using the the namespace feature that Ghidra has and the class feature and a bit more of the the structure stuff that Ghidra um, that Ghidra has.